Hey, what's up? My name is Mike Yakovlev, and I've painted a lot of rain over the course of my uh, artistic career. I painted rain in cities, I've painted rain on characters, I've painted rain in concept art illustrations, all kinds of digital paintings. And today I'm gonna show you how I do that. Rain is kind of a delicate thing because you can do it really simply and easily by just you know blurring a bunch of dots, or you can go in and hand paint it. And I think this method is a nice mix of both and it can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. So I'll show you my process and hopefully you, you can kind of get a good idea of how to paint rain and it'll help you in your project. So let's get right into that. So the first thing is that I have a model here that I just exported from Blender, just something for us to paint the rain onto, and I think it'll make it a little bit easier. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this really dark because I think the rain will be the most, like the, the, the how I'm painting the rain will be the most evident and easy to see on a darker surface. So I'll make my first layer here. And the first layer is just, let's make a rain that, let's make like a regular, heavy-ish kind of rain. So like the rain you'd probably see in a lot of images and just rain that feels kind of dramatic. So the, what we'll do is the light source will just be like a top-down light source like that. So from here, that's that will be our light source. I'm gonna just bring that back down a little bit. And we'll save that. So the first thing is if you go into the brush pack, and this brush pack is one that I've just downloaded over the years and collected all kinds of stuff put together. You can download it for free in the link down below the like button. So first I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into the clouds and particles and smoke, grab this brush here. It's hard to see, but it's exactly what we want. See how, how it looks. And I'm just gonna kind of tap this around to fill the screen, not, not too much. Go into filter, blur, motion blur, and uh, yeah, I kind of like the diagonal of that, so I'll keep that angle. I'll do a next layer, same thing, just layering so that there's feels some, so like rain, sometimes you can just add a layer and it'll be flat, but it looks flat and in movies and sometimes you'll see this, they just add like a rain layer on top of everything and it doesn't feel like it's in the 3D space, it doesn't feel like it's in the scene for real. So we want to kind of help that effect, help that depth effect by layering, you know, different rain intensities and, and, and things like that. So this one is not going to be as much. Maybe I'll turn it just to give it a little bit of variety. Filter, blur, motion blur, same thing. And it won't be as intense. Maybe we'll offset it by a little bit so that it feels like there's a little bit of motion there. So now you can see, you know, it's not just one direction, it's two directions. And rain, you know, when it's windy, it kind of blows in all kinds of directions, especially if you see every, if you ever see like heavy rain, you can almost see it looks like a flock of birds just floating around. So I think this, this kind of helps us here. And I'm going to start taking an eraser, just kind of dab the eraser over top on, on, on the rain itself. So especially where our figure is. So then the rain is kind of broken up. It's not just all in the same even layers. Again, we want to constantly break it up a little bit, give it some variety, have some part of it go in front of the model, have some of it go behind the model. Anyway, I hope that made sense. So here's our second layer. Let's get right into it. Third layer is going to be um, just a little bit thicker. I'm going to pick a different particle brush here. All right. Let's see. How, how's this? Interesting. I like this one. I'm just going to kind of, again, brush this around. And since the light is, the focus of the light is here, I think most of the activity in the rain is going to be towards the center and towards the edges, you really won't see it. Because that's one thing about rain is that it really pops out when it's a light around a light source. So if there's a light, like a really bright street light and rain is passing over it, you'll see it there and you really won't see it. In the, in the pure dark areas. So unless there's a light that's, you know, unless there's a light that's shining onto the water nearby, you really, you know, you kind of won't have rain in just like a pure dark environment. Or at least you won't even see it. So there we go. I might leave that. I kind of like how it looks like these like little particles. Sometimes you can go and get a smudge brush and this pack also comes with a really good smudge folder. 
bunch of uh, smudges here. This one's good. And sometimes I take the smudge brush and just sort of run it over the particles instead of using blur, just kind of run it over loosely. You can kind of see that breaks them up. It gives them some smudge. It kind of gives you a similar effect, but in a more like abstract way. And I double that layer and merge it. So that's it's a little bit more visible. And then I'm going to take the original uh, elephant render here and I'm going to clip a layer into it and since we have that top down highlight, I'm just rotating this. I'm going to paint in the uh, like the, the surface of where the water is going to be hitting. So I'm just going to pick a texture brush and this is clipped in so we can kind of just start running the brush over the surface like that. I'm going to take a, the smudge brush again and just kind of clean up this edge so that it's not super harsh. And just kind of blend it in. I like blending with the smudge brush. I don't know, it's just really just a lot easier. And you can kind of control where you want it to be soft versus where you want it to be hard. So there's the surface of the body. It's a little bit too long here. I'm going to add a little bit more there. Use the smudge brush again to just like blend that in a little bit. Okay. All right. I think that looks good. I'm just going to fine tune it. All right. Cool. So that's our like rim light that's coming from the light that's right above it. And this rim light is good because like once you have this in here and now you see what I do next, it'll really start to make it look wet. So I'm going to take a really fine brush here, something small like this, make it really small, make it really white. And I'm just going to scribble along the surface like this. And this is adding like perceived rain detail and particles. So it kind of makes it look scratchy. It looks kind of messy, but it's, I think it's really fun to do it this way. And I'm just going really light over top. You can just, I'm just kind of making scribbles like this right on that surface, not going too far off the edge. It kind of implies little tiny water droplets, little tiny water splashes right on the surface that happen um, when rain, you know, hits the surface. Especially when it's active, like when the rain is just running and it's splashing and there's a lot of activity there. You put that right over top of this layer. And I'm not going, I'm not pressing super hard. You can see like, this is me pressing hard. I'm not pressing hard. I'm very, keeping, keeping it very light. You know, you don't have to think about it too much. Make little curly cues and scribbles where the, where the surface has the most white. And if it's less, you do a little bit less like that. So you can kind of see already, like it's an optical illusion, but it starts to look like there's some activity there. There's some like rain particles or something splashing off of that surface and bouncing around. So if we zoom out, starting to look a little bit better. It's starting to look like it's really starting to really come together. That's the first layer of that. And then the second version of that is to take a particle brush Go back to our particle brushes. I like this one. All right, so I made a new layer and now I grab that brush and I'm just gonna, oh, it's, it's too small. All right, so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Not, if I make it too small, you just won't be able to see it, it doesn't show up. But I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Basically gonna just go over the edge like that. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm just following that same highlight that I painted in earlier. I gotta kind of make it big because the brush doesn't show up if it's not big enough. I'm kind of going over it, but that's because the brush is big and I will just erase what I don't need. So I have it there like that and I'll just take an eraser brush and erase all of this extra stuff that I don't need. And this is like extra spray. It's basically like extra spray from the rain. The stuff we painted in earlier with the small brush was the little detail version. And then this is like a broader version. So you don't have to do the super detailed version if you don't want to. But, uh, you know, all of these 
all of these levels of rain splashes and, and drops and stuff just adds more to the to the activity of it so it feels not just like again a flat image of motion blur particles so i kind of erased most of it but you can still see it's there and it does add a little bit more randomness to it so the last thing is i'm going to take that same take a simple round brush and just kind of like drop those in sometimes using the mouse is better sometimes a tablet just like it has too much sensitivity to the to the hardness so using the mouse just gives it like a hundred percent right away just kind of clicking this all the way around and then the last thing is just some hand painted raindrops so we did the hand painted splashes and now i'm gonna do some hand painted raindrops and use the same brush from before just like scratch them in it's like on my tablet going like that that motion and really just wherever it looks like they they could be helpful they can pop out and, th and this you can put over top of the model you don't have to keep it localized onto the where the surface is you can kind of make it go move past the model a little bit or on top of the focus just like this because we know the light is coming from the top we can focus them we can be a little bit more heavy-handed where the light is and like this whole direction we can be a little bit more heavy-handed but as we go further out we can like be a little bit lighter with the scratches I like the texture brush because it's not like the same stroke every single time. There's a little bit of grit to it. There's a little bit of variety to the shape. And I think that helps us instead of, instead of hurting us. I'm going to erase, just erase some of the parts that I don't like too much. I can even take this all, Shift-C, Shift-V, duplicate. Erase again, parts I don't like. Actually, I might turn it like that. I'm gonna duplicate it again and then flip it for that. I just get free detail without having to manually paint it in myself. So all of these are the are our rain layers, and I'll put them all into the same folder. And I'm going to just take the light. There it is. Bring it back down because I'm going to take this and duplicate it. So now it's a little bit more intense. And now you can really see when it's like too much, you can see all of the things that we did. It's very obvious. But the best thing about it is like to keep it subtle. So I'm going to bring it down just a bit. That's, that's, generally, that's generally the effect. I'm just going to create a little bit of a vignette that you don't see all the stuff on the edges. I think it doesn't sell the effect as well. Cool. But yeah, I hope that was a good demo that kind of ex explained to you my process for how I paint rain. And you can go through here and like erase, you know, erase parts you don't need, or this is just, this is just a general overview of how I do it. And I take a lot more time with this. I'll like, you know, really make it deliberate where I want the rain to show up, where I don't want it to show up. But just keep in mind, like wherever the light source is, that's where the rain is gonna be the brightest. And then from there, as long as you're just erasing and adding and, and giving it variety, I think it should look good. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, give it a like. If you wanna know a little bit more about this technique or see anything else in, in particular, definitely let me know down in the comments below. If you think this video can help somebody and you wanna share it, I would love that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.